Hello everybody, Mr. Brown from Proclaim Ministries, helping you connect faith and life. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Uh, I'm grateful for those of you who are leaving comments on our channel. And remember, you can always join to help support the, the ministry. Um, you can join the channel or you can donate to our ministry by visiting ProclaimMinistry.com slash give. And right now, between now and the, the year, we have a matching grant, a $10,000 matching grant. Several people got together and every dollar you give will be matched up to $10,000 between now and the end of the year. So please donate because your $1 can become $2 or so your $10 become $20, your $100 can become $200, and you can do the math, just multiply it by two. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, and today I wanted to share some thoughts that I had today about being thankful. Um, and every year around this time, I do a, uh, some message about the attitude of gratitude. I choose the attitude of gratitude, and I think it's so important to be grateful for everything that we do have. So today I met with several principals as I'm working with the school, making videos for the school, some once a week, some once a month, doing Zoom calls with classrooms, in light of COVID-19, not being able to do a lot of assemblies, I've still done a few, but I'm still working with schools and it's, 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 I'm grateful for it. Today, as I was driving you know, to one of the schools, I was just grateful for the opportunity to go out and continue to impact the culture. As I talked to principals today, one of the themes that became um, overwhelmingly important is to make sure we give thanks for where we are. Um, it's so much that we can complain about. Most of us can find a lot of things to complain about because it's easy to do. Um, things don't go the way we want them to go. Um, a lot of times we're not grateful for the things that we have because we're so busy looking at what we don't have, or what we want, or what we should have. And especially around Thanksgiving, I think it's so funny. Thanksgiving is on a Thursday, right? And we celebrate Thanksgiving here in America. And before we even get done eating the food, the sales for the, it used to be Black Friday, you know, get up at four o'clock in the morning, go to these stores. Now it's like Thursday night uh, before you, the food ain't even cold yet. Uh, we gotta go get the new thing. And that just, I think it brings in us, it's just this idea of we have to have more. We gotta get, 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 get. And not to just sit back and be grateful and thankful what we have. And so today, as we talked about that, I wanna be able to help these schools and the school culture and climate to be one of thankfulness or gratefulness and to think about what they have, to look for the good and not always look for the bad, to celebrate those victories and the moments that we've had this year so far, in spite of COVID, in spite of wearing masks, in spite of all things that can go on, distance learning, in-person, hybrid, all the stuff that can go on, to still look for opportunities to be grateful. So I thought about my own life. Am I grateful much? Um, do I choose to have the attitude of gratitude in my life? And it made me think of this story uh, that's found in Luke chapter 17, starting at verse number 11. And this story is the story of Jesus cleansed 10 lepers. And I really like this story because it's very simple and to the point of what took place. So let me read it to you and then we can uh, just dissect some of it and talk about it. And hopefully um, by the end of time, we will together choose to have the attitude of gratitude, to be thankful and not just feel thankful, but willing to, to praise God and thank God for what he's actually done for us and what he does for us on a regular basis but also show that gratitude toward other people who do things for us and help us throughout our lives. So um, Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And he was, he had, and as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Jesus, he, when, when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks to him. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. There's so much, I think, that's deeper in this passage that I don't know if I have time to get into or just my own thoughts. But the basic story is these 10 lepers were saw Jesus. They knew he could heal them. And they stood a far distance because leprosy was this terrible disease that um, they were considered unclean ceremonially. They uh, it's either boils or just on their skin. And it was just a bad disease. There was no cure for it. And so they had to stand at the distance. Although other times Jesus actually walked to the people with leprosy and touched them. So um, Jesus did a remarkable things and amazing things. But anyway, these 10 lepers from a distance said, hey, uh, will you make us cleanse? So Jesus 
told them to go show themselves to the priest back in the Old Testament. That was one way you showed you was here from you were healed from leprosy. Although it was very rare that you would ever get healed, but you had to go yourself to the show yourself to the priest. They would examine you and, and declare you ceremonially clean. Well, they were on their way and they looked down and realized they were cleansed. Um, and this one leper came back to say thank you, he fell at Jesus' feet to say thank you. And he was Samaritan. So I think Jesus is telling the story to the to the Jewish people to kind of show because Samaritans were not liked there and they were half breeds people put them down but jesus made that that statement for a reason i think that's deeper and we're not going to right now but just on the surface this samaritan leper came back praising god and giving thanks because he's healed and jesus question was hey wasn't there nine other were the other nine that i healed um they didn't come back to say thank you now i thought it was significant too as i read that just now jesus says at the end go your faith has made you well now, I think it was clear that the other nine were cleansed of their, their leprosy, but what did Jesus mean by your faith has made you well? Was he better off because he expressed his thankfulness to God? Was he in a better position? I think all 10 were cleansed, but what did that do for him as he showed thankfulness, as he came back praising God, falling on his feet um, and giving thanks to God? I think there's something deep in that. I think there's something that happens within us that as we... I think we become happier people. I don't have proof for this. <laughs> um, maybe you, you know some passages, but I think there's just something true about having a grateful heart um, and being thankful. And I think it's something that carries us on because again, we can choose to look at the negative and choose to look at the things that we don't have versus the things that we do have. And I think when that becomes a focus, I think it even helps us to be well, or as my shirt says, choose well. I think when, we, when, we, when we're showing gratefulness or we choose the attitude of gratitude, um, I think that's a, that's a way we can choose well, but I think it also makes us well. And so I had to look, think of the story and think of myself, am I really grateful? Sometimes I think having so much makes me less grateful because the little that I do get, I'm grateful for, I don't know. I just, I just really want to think about this idea. Am I really grateful to step back and think about all that God has done for me, all that God is doing in my life, in spite of all the things that can be going wrong in my life? The fact that I have, uh, I'm breathing. The fact that I have a family. Today I, I worked all day. I was gone all day, and Sophia was like, "Why are you going all day?" I said, "Baby, because I have to work." Why are you out there taking you from work? Because I have to go Friday, and I'll be gone all day Friday. And I said, well, "Baby, because you know this is the way that we get food. <laughs> the way that we, 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 we have the house and things that we have in our house. I have to go to work." Time. And I said, be grateful that I'm not like in the military or a firefighter and I have to go off for weeks at a time. And she was like, oh, yeah, you're right. And sometimes we just look at what we uh, what we don't have instead of what we do have. And so I think that was a great conversation for us to have to think about that. But even for myself, and what about you? Do you have the attitude of gratitude for all that God has done and what God is doing in our life, even though things might not be perfect? And some people are upset right now because of uh, the election went one way or the other, or our nation is fighting and 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 people are all the stuff is going on uh, while the election and COVID and restrictions. Our our county is supposed to be going into the new uh, restrictor 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 um code or color whatever it is and that could be a reason to to be upset um but i think we have to look for opportunities to be grateful for god um to be grateful for all that we do have and uh, i was reminded of that and I, I don't know if i made this video yet by the time i made we shot the video i don't know if it's edited yet but me and my kids were talking about music and music that we really like and lately we've been listening to a lot of ren collect Ren Collection, R-E-N-D, Ren Collection. Um, some of their, their songs, um, My Lighthouse, um, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength, and my kids are really getting into those songs. And so recently, I was playing some of their songs, and uh, this song came uh, came to me, and I, I heard this song, and it just made me really think again to reinforce the idea of being thankful. So I'm gonna read some of the lyrics of this Ren Collective. Uh, the name of the song is, let me get my glasses on so I can see. All right, the name of the song is Counting Every Blessing. Um, I was blind, now I seen in color. And I'm blind, now I'm seeing in color. I was dead, now I'm living forever. I have failed, but you, ha you were my redeemer. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I was lost, now I'm found by the Father. I have been changed from a ruin to treasure. I've been given a hope and a future. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I'm counting every blessing, counting every blessing, letting go and trusting when I cannot see. Count every blessing, count every blessing. Uh, surely every season you are good to me. 
and they do a whole lot of whoa, 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 which I'm not gonna do for you right now. But as I listen to that song, that you are good to me, I'm counting every blessing. And I think when we count those blessings that God has given us, it causes us to, to have a heart of thankfulness. And the Bible says, give thanks in the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. And the Bible talks about, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So I think there's something about giving thanks and being those people who have an attitude of gratitude and giving thanks in everything that we have. And so uh, think about that for your life as we enter this season of Thanksgiving and Christmas and I think reflection as we enter the end of the year is a time of reflection. And even though 2020 was not what anybody expected, <laughs> um, we can still look back, give thanks, give thanks where we are today and knowing that ultimately as followers of Christ, we have a promised future that's secure for us in eternity. So I'm counting every blessing. I'm counting every blessing because God, you are good to me. So may I be like the one leper and may I encourage the nine to come back and to look back and look at Jesus, look at God the Father, what he's done for us and have an attitude of gratitude and give thanks. Let's pray. God, thank you for the reminder of how important it is for us to give thanks. Thank you that you have given us so much to be grateful for. And Lord, help us to choose the attitude of gratitude in every area of our life. May we be people that, that walk with you, that love you, um, that live lives that are pleasing to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.